let's learn about aerial photography in the snow. I think the most beautiful time for any type of landscape photography is just after a fresh snow. My favorite is when the snow is a little bit wet and sticky and it latches on to the tree branches and the roofs of homes because it outlines everything and adds this little bit of contrast and detail. But even just snow on the ground covers up dead leaves and broken branches and just generally makes the world a simpler, more peaceful and beautiful place. It's especially beautiful for aerial photography with a drone because those wide angle shots allow you to capture the massive amount of ground that snow can cover. Your timing is really important here, especially with a drone. You don't want to be out when it's snowing because the snow falling is going to ruin your visibility. It's also definitely, definitely going to make your drone wet. And I've flown in the snow. The drone will generally survive it okay, but you're not going to get a clear shot. You're not going to get a good shot. The best time is what I happen to have right now, which is the snow has stopped, but the wind hasn't raised enough to blow off all of the snow. That's probably going to be in the early morning. The earlier you can get out, the better. Also, the clouds have cleared a little bit, so now I have fresh sunlight and that's making all the snow really, really pop. There are some precautions you need to take. Before you take off, make sure all your batteries are fully charged. Your smartphone, your controller, and your drone. Also, you need to really plan out your flight. Think of the exact path that you're going to take, take off and then land as soon as possible. If possible, and there's wind, fly upwind first. Because you know what? In the cold weather like this, your batteries are gonna die so, so fast. And they can die suddenly and unexpectedly. In normal weather conditions, you sort of see a linear progression of the battery, 90, 80%, 70%, 60%. But in cold weather, I've taken it out of my warm car and I've seen the battery go from 90% to 40% and then suddenly a forced landing where the drone just kind of immediately comes down. And if that does start to happen, know that you can usually fight off the forced landing by just pushing up on the sticks, but you need to be able to get it back to you quickly before the battery runs out or you might be landing someplace you don't want to land like the middle of the ocean. Notice I don't have any drone shots of me walking out to the location. That's because this is a state park in Connecticut and I'm not legally allowed to launch, land, or operate a drone on state park grounds, but there's a loophole. I can walk just outside of the state park and still film there because the FAA in the US controls the airspace, not the park service. Cameras have a really hard time auto exposing snow. You'll need to use a couple of tools to double check the camera's exposure. Before you fly, turn on the histogram and zebras. The histogram is this bar chart that shows the relative brightness of the image from the darkest on the left to the brightest on the right. And if you see the right side of the histogram peaking, that means the image might be a little bit overexposed. If there's no bars on the right side of the histogram, that means that the entire image might be a little bit underexposed. Zebras also tell you when an image is overexposed by drawing black and white lines over the overexposed part of the picture. You can see here, by changing the scene, parts of the snow became overexposed, and that means that they're gonna be completely blown out and solid white. The solution to an overexposed image is to adjust the exposure compensation down. In this DJI app, it's touching EV and then scrolling to a negative value until the histogram is corrected and the zebras are gone. Often, switching to negative one is exactly what you need. Other times, especially when the snow is filling the screen, your camera might underexpose the image, making it too dark and noisy. You can correct this by adding exposure compensation, switching it to a positive value to make the overall image brighter. When you go to the next scene, be sure to set EV back to zero to reset the exposure compensation so you don't over or underexpose future shots. Be careful not to take off in the snow because when the drone starts up, it tends to calibrate the camera by moving it all around and it will point it directly down into the snow. If you get any moisture on the front lens, it's gonna ruin your shots. Not permanently, you can usually dry it off, but it will appear as a blur on the lens. When you take off, if possible, fly upwind against the wind. 
That's going to burn more battery power, but if your battery suddenly drains from the cold, it'll make it easier for you to return the drone to you. In cold weather, don't drain the battery too far. I don't like to fly it below 50% because the battery power can suddenly drop as the drone gets colder, and it's particularly cold at higher altitudes. When landing, find a clear spot away from snow or catch it in your hand, but be careful not to hurt your hands. If the drone is at all wet, take the battery out and dry it off. You, it'll probably be fine because the moisture generally doesn't seep inside of it. If you don't nail the exposure while filming, you can probably adjust the exposure in post. We use Final Cut to edit our videos and the exposure tab here allows us to adjust the highlights, shadows, and overall exposure for a better look. Sometimes the exposure shifts within a single scene as the camera pans around and fills more of the scene with snow. You can make gradual transitions by using keyframes as we show here. You can see, even in the time that I've been filming this, the snow has melted off the building. You really gotta get there fast if you're gonna do it. I hope you found this video useful. We have a ton of more tutorials coming and drone reviews, so subscribe to see that, it's all free. Also check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which whether you're using a smartphone, a real camera, or a drone, teaches you things like composition, timing, art, and lighting, and will really improve both your photos and your video. Also check out my books on Lightroom and Photoshop because for the still photography that you capture, those are gonna do a lot to improve those. Thanks so much, and if you have any follow-up tips or comments, write a comment down below. Bye.